In this video, we're going to be working with the Interplanetary File System, or IPFS. This is for the Resources Module of the E-Learning 3.0 course. I'm Stephen Downs. IPFS is a distributed network, a peer-to-peer -peer distributed network for resource sharing. What we're going to be doing is installing one of the nodes for that network. We're going to download the software, install it, make it work. Now, this is only like the fifth or sixth time I've tried to make this video. So be warned, uh, you know, it might not necessarily go really well the first time, but if you follow these instructions exactly, uh, you'll get the same result I did, um, which hopefully will be a successful install. So I'm using instructions that were provided to me by Manfred Auer in this video on YouTube called How to Install IPFS on a Windows PC Easily. Easily is a relative term as always. Um, it's a pretty good video. Uh, I do recommend it. Um, I'm doing a video because I want to add my own commentary and because I want your view of the operating systems to be in English, not in German. So IPFS itself the uh, the website is here ipfs.io but we're going to go to the download site the download site is located here dist.ipfs.io so we'll go there and here we are and uh, this is the the top of it welcome to ipfs distributions so we're going to scroll down until we get to go ipfs that's the main implementation of IPFS. I'm going to click on download go IPFS. Notice that what the site's doing is it's detecting my operating system and giving me the right download for that. So I'll click on that. Um, so I'm going to save the file and downloads in a matter of seconds. I'm going to open the file and click on it. Go IPFS and now I want to extract it. The video suggests that you can extract it using 7-zip and that would work perfectly well. I have the WinZip built right into my Windows 7 so I'm going to use that. Extract all files. I'm just going to ex extract it into my home directory. So in my case it's users downs s extract and again a matter of seconds. So now I've popped open into my own directory. Scroll down, here it is, go-ipfs. And there are the files that I've downloaded. Now, in a kind and just world, all I would need to do is click on ipfs.exe and it would install it for me. But this is not a kind and just world. So I actually have to use um, the uh, command shell. Now you can use the regular command prompt that everybody uses with Windows. I'm not going to recommend that because we're going to be doing some copying and pasting later and that command prompt won't work. So I'm going to be using the PowerShell. If you're looking for it on your system, this, again this is Windows 7, your config might vary a little bit. Go under all programs, accessories, and Windows PowerShell, and then I picked the top one, and there it is. And so here I am, it opens up into my directory. I'm gonna change directory into uh, Go IPFS, and here I am, these are the files that I've downloaded. So I've got my PowerShell on here, and here I've got my downloaded files. I'm all set to go. Now, how easy will this be? We'll see. So, could type stuff in, but it's a lot easier to just drag and drop. So I'm going to drag ipfs.exe and drop it here right at the command prompt. And you see it just types the whole instruction for me. Now I'm gonna type a space and then init, I-N-I-T. That's going to initialize it for me. Now what it's doing here is it's generating a public key 
and a private key. And it's doing this, it's also putting a .ipfs uh, directory in my home directory that'll store all the relevant information for me. So, so far so good. I've got a public key and a private key. Why do I need these? Well, remember this is a distributed network of nodes, right? So my public key is going to be my identification on this network. All right, next step. Um, again, we're gonna drag and drop. So now again, we're, we're, this is the, the executable program. And now we want to copy this. This is our public key, right? And so we want it to copy this. So I'm gonna oops, highlight it, control C to copy, and then control V to paste. And of course that doesn't work. Why not? Okay, I, the way I pasted it there, I did a right click. So, um, this should work. Uh, this is what the instruction said. So now I'm going to hit enter. Error unknown command. Why didn't that work? Oh, because it should be cat. See, I forgot to put the cat in there. So let's try that again, except with the cat in there. C-A-T, and what that's doing is, here's the, uh, here's the program that we're supposed to execute. Cat is like read, and then here's the file it's supposed to read as input to that program. So let's see if this works. I don't have to go to the end, but I'm superstitious. Hit enter. And if you're seeing this, you have successfully installed IPFS and are now interfacing with the IPFS Merkle DAG. Merkle, Merkle DAG. Merkle um, Directional Acyclic Graph. And of course, we've talked about these before. All right, so what's next because of course life isn't so simple um see if i remember from the video uh see if i got this right um of course you know we, we could read some of these help files that would be a neat idea but i want to do stuff now so i'm going to drag again this thing in so i've done two things so far um, I've made my public and private keys. I've installed IPFS. Now I need it to actually run. And so I want to create what's called a daemon, or sometimes I pronounce it daemon, D-A-E-M-O-N. That's like a service. It will run in the background on my computer. It will communicate with the rest of the world and basically open up the world of IPFS to me, if I've remembered this command correctly. So let's hit enter and see if I have. And looks good. So, okay. Um, API server listening on, and here's the address. And gateway server listening on, and here's the address. Daemon is ready. So I should be able to copy this address. Control C to copy. And see, this is a part of the video that was a little bit opaque. So let's open up a new window. I'll paste this. So 127.0.0.1 is the address of this computer TCP 8080, probably port number. So I'm going to try 127.0.0.1 colon 8080 and I get a page not found all right let's try the same thing again except I won't change things and I'm able to connect uh, hmm. well I don't know let's pause the video 
Okay, we're resuming again. It's only been about five minutes, but I had to stop and figure out what was going on here. Uh, see, here, here's what happened. Um, when I watched the video, uh, he started up his demon, and then this nice handy-dandy little window popped up, and then he checked both of these uh, things here, um, which means private and public, and then time passed and this neo and sis it was browser viewer popped up you know, none of that happened for me um, so what happened for me is well uh, I started the game and the demon started and then that was it so what do you do then so uh, I did a little searching I never did find this uh, I don't know what this is. Maybe it's something that only runs on Windows 10. Who knows? Um, but I did a little searching and uh, found this Firefox add-on called IPFS Companion. So if you're using Firefox, there might be something similar for um, Chrome. Maybe, maybe not. Um, but anyhow, I found this. I'm going to click Add to Firefox. And that's what it's going to do. It's going to add it to Firefox. Um, and uh, it's going to need to be able to uh, access a bunch of things. But give it permission. And now it says you're all set. And it's saying, now if my daemon was not running, you see, here we are. Uh, my daemon is in fact running. Right. If my daemon were not running, it would ask, it would sit here and say, is your daemon running? Um, and you'd start up your daemon and it'll automatically say, you're all set. So this thing here, this extension is trying to access your, your local daemon. All right. So you are all set. Discover what you can do. And this kind of neat, right? Uh, when I first started it up, about well, five minutes ago, it was connected to two peers. <clears throat> now it's connected to 351 peers, and that number fluctuates a bit, right? So, go, let's see what I can do with my companion. So, this is now, oh, it took me to GitHub. All right, auto magical detection of IPFS resources. So, in other words, um, if a tested path is a valid IPF, IPFS address, it gets redirected and loaded from a local gateway. So for example, here's the address. I don't know if this is a real address, but I'm going to try it. Let's open a new window to do this. So you see, here is the address of an IPFS resource. And this is what makes things neat about this system. This is a hash of the resource that I'm trying to access. A hash is made up of the content of that resource. You take that content, run it through an algorithm, a hashing algorithm, and this standardized kind of string is the output. So for that reason, we say it's content addressable. If you change the content in any way, this hash is going to change. So now I'll hit enter and it's going to interpret it and find this lovely picture of a white monkey. Um, and you see, it's actually reading this from my IPFS instance. This is the 127.0.0.1. That's my local machine, the computer I just installed IPFS on. 8080 is the port, IPFS is the directory in that port, and now this is the actual address of the white monkey, which is the hash of that white monkey. Let's see what else we got here. Um, companion will detect presence of DNS link in DNS records of visited websites, etc. Um, X IPFS path. Will upgrade transport to IPFS if the header is found in the HTTP response headers. That's pretty cool. So 
if you access a website and in the header of the website there's an IPFS declaration it'll go to IPFS instead of using the regular HTTPS or HTTP um, okay bunch of other stuff stuff to explore right um, and there are some experimental protocols uh, so you might see some reference to these things right IPM IPNS uh, I'm not sure what that stands for uh, D web distributed web make plain text IPFS links clickable demo so here's the demo uh, oh but it's not gonna work oh because <laughs> it was trying to launch IPFS locally yeah that's interesting um, so basically right that's it so what I want to do after this is somehow publish a page to IPFS and so that's going to be the next step we'll make that a separate video uh, for now I just wanted to get IPFS up and running IPFS is indeed up and running and uh, we'll see what we can do with that next so uh, <laughs> this video was about six attempts in the making so you know don't expect things to go perfect on the right perfect on the first try um, I had problems I used this um, stupid administrator command prompt and then mistyped my IPFS thing then I had to go back and completely erase everything to do with IPFS including a hidden directory in my home uh, in my home folder called dot IPFS I had to go in and remove that using the PowerShell and start all over again so might not go perfectly but give it a shot and uh, let us know how it works